All right, guys, welcome back to Tales from the Junkyard, and today we're doing another car review. I'm going to check out a 1990 300ZX twin turbo with all wheel steering, five speed. This thing's going to be awesome. The car belongs to a buddy of mine. He agreed to let me borrow it for the day, and uh, let's go check this thing out. It's going to be epic. Like I said earlier, today we have something really special, and it's right behind me. Actually, it's right next to me. Let me peek that over real quick. You see, I see it? <laughs> yeah. That back there is a 1991 Nissan 300ZX, which is really cool. It's got the twin turbos. As you can see, T-tops, five-speed. This thing's really, really cool. It's a special vehicle. I've always wanted to check one out and drive one. And today I get the chance, so let's check this out. All right, guys, so like I said earlier, this is a 91, sorry, 90 300ZX twin turbo with all wheel steering and T-tops. It's a really special car. It's got a five speed in it. And this is like the maximum you can get from back then in Nissan. This was like the tippity top, at least in the States, right? I know that the uh, Skyline existed in Japan and you know, but we didn't get that here. We got this and this is plenty. Trust me, this is pretty good. Now this is really, really cool because it has, they basically, Nissan took all the technology they had available and threw it at this car. I mean, you're talking about uh, variable valve timing and this time, you're talking about sequential turbos, you're talking about, uh, of course, the T-tops like I mentioned earlier, and that rear steering, which is actually really cutting edge for back then. Um, this thing came in two different styles, right? And it's in it during its life. Well, we're talking about the two-door, two-seater sports car style, and they did make a two plus two version that, you know, try to sit two more people in the back. Not, not really, but it, you know, it was meant for that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a slight overview of how this car came in this generation. Now let's give it a nice little walk around real quick. Look how nice this thing is. Now the 300ZX actually existed in the 80s in a slightly more boxer or boxier form uh, than this. And that was a pretty cool car. But at the time it was still, you know, not quite what it could be. This was the evolution of that. They actually redesigned the entire thing, kept all of his like the basics, right? They kept what they wanted to do with the car and then just amped it all up. So redesigned suspension, redesigned chassis. The whole nine yards is just brand new for this generation of vehicle. Now this style actually debuted in 1989, believe it or not, in Japan. We didn't get one here until the 90s. So look at, look at how nice that looks. Beautiful car. Wow, just awesome. So I'm gonna go over a few things about that I love about this car, what I've always wanted to check out, and why it's so special. All right, so let's start with what makes this car so special. Back in the day, this is 1990, right? Um, we were coming out of the 80s here in America and pretty much the rest of the world, and nothing had any real power. I mean, if you got a Mustang with 220 horsepower, you were like, wow, that thing was fast at the time, right? So then these cars come out and we're talking 275 horsepower, then 300 horsepower. And in realistic terms, a lot of these cars had a little bit more than that, but you know, they kind of fib a little bit just to not to make the uh, gentleman's agreement, right? We all know about the gentleman's agreement in Japan to not produce too much horsepower here and there. It's it's a whole little convoluted problem. But anyway, these things produce three, north of 300 horsepower. And this has been actually dialed up to 11. <laughs> and I'll explain in a little bit. But anyway, V6, three liter, twin turbocharged, intercooled, right? We got a five speed hitting to the back of the wheels. So this is all high tech for Nissan. This is, you know, all wheel disc brakes as it should be. These wheels have actually been upgraded to the 18s, which are special wheels, and I'll get to those in a little bit. Um, we got a staggered set, so they're further out, as you can see, just like my Fiero, where these spokes are further out to the outside of the wheel. So we got different offsets, both front and back. And we got the rear wheel steering. Now, in order to get the rear wheel steering to work back here, that's what this was for. So these wheels actually were expanded to 18 inch to clear that. So let's see if we can see that on the bottom here. I doubt it, but down there see see that little piston right in the middle there that's your wheel steering that's your rear wheel steering that occurs at high speeds now at high speeds it helps you turn a corner making this feel a lot like an all-wheel drive car or at least close to it right get you a little bit more handling look at this rear styling that's really really cool i love the fact that they actually took the time to detail the spoiler trim just like the lower piece trim to give it that flowing look here, the black, the black dot area. I always thought that looked really cool. Some people may not like it. I like it, it's pretty good. I like the understated wing, the little lip spoiler back here. 
that's really cool i always thought that this looked a lot better than some of the later models had a bigger wing on them and i never really liked the way that looked on there this looks really nice oh man those t-tops are so cool t-tops need to make a comeback all right uh, 2021 t-top let's go but anyway let's see here again coming around to the side here oh and this has a very 90s thing i want to show you guys it has <laughs> the seatbelt on the door now this was to circumvent a uh, government thing right so the government had the man mandated it you either had these seat belts or the ones that attach to the track i don't know if you guys have seen those before there's a seat belt that actually goes from the front of the a pillar and it has a track that goes to the back for safety that was a mandate back then so in order to circumvent that you got these <laughs> pretty crazy right so you can actually open the door with the seatbelt still on Imagine that would look pretty cool. All right, we got pretty cool interior in here. Little red area. Now, of course, the gentleman who owns this did a few customizations for it, as you would, right? But yeah, he did the red insert in the middle there. I think that looks pretty nice. Your five speed. And those three buttons are actually pretty important. At least one of them is. I don't know if you can see it from here. Let's lean in. You see, guys, see that? Yeah, we got tunable suspension. Obviously not a whole lot, sport or touring. I'll show you guys in a little bit how that works. Anyway, I don't know. I think this looks really, really cool. It's very sleek. It's a very timeless look, by the way. Um, hasn't aged badly at all. It, it's aged very well, at least in my opinion. Right? A couple of things from the front that you may not know. So a lot of you guys might already know about these headlights. Now, these headlights are special, not because they're on this 300 ZX. It's because these were actually on a Lamborghini in the 90s. The Diablo had these. Now, in order for the Diablo to have them, right, Lamborghini actually covered up a top strip that says Nissan. You see how it says Nissan here? They actually had a strip that covered that up so that you couldn't tell these were off of the Nissan. But if you had a Nissan or if you knew of the Nissan, it was pretty easy to tell these were the same headlights. Crazy, right? So either you have a Nissan with Lamborghini headlights or you have a Lamborghini with Nissan headlights, whichever you want to take that. Now, that's one thing most people know. However, did you know, and this is something that the owner told me, you see that slit in the bottom there? So obviously we've got the opening for the radiator here, right? Cool. But then there's a middle slit. You see that? Now, why is that so small? Why is that a weird size? Well, according to the owner, these, this slit was actually supposed to be bigger to allow air, right? To cool off the engine. So we got a radiator in here, you got the engine, air is supposed to go through the front of this vehicle, like almost every other vehicle and then cool off, right? Well, this car was designed to go fast and be slippery as you can see the shape. Well, if we put, start putting holes in the front of this thing, it's gonna prevent that from happening the way it's supposed to, right? The way the engineers wanted it to have it. So there was a big fight between the engineers who wanted it to be slippery and the guys who just wanted this thing to work right. So <laughs> they went to a compromise and they did that little slit. So you got a halfway opening, you know, because reasons, <laughs> compromises, I guess, right? Oh, and uh, let's see, go to the bottom here. Quick little fact about the twin turbo cars. Those are the intakes for the turbos right there. The non-turbo cars don't have these slits. Pretty cool little detail there. Oh, and in the 90s was a big thing to have uh, turning cornering lights. These lights actually come on when you uh, put the turn signal to light up the cornering you're supposed to go through. I thought that was really cool. I had a Maxima to had that. That was pretty cool. But yeah, once again, guys, this is a really cool looking car. High end looking. It was one of the best cars of its time. It actually earned a uh, 10 best award every time it was in production. It was pretty cool. So you know what? I think it's time to look at the amazing engine this thing has. Yeah, let's check that out. All right, guys. So the piece de resistance, this thing. Look at, look at this. Look at this engine bay. Wow. Look at that. Look at the tight tolerances in here Yeesh. oh my lord all right well anyway this is a three liter v6 twin turbocharged uh you know nissan motors really really cool engine this thing produces at stock back when way back when used to produce 300 about 300 horsepower right um at this tuning because he has actually tuned this um it's sitting at 350 at the wheel now so just do the maths there, you know, 20% uh, loss, 15% loss, whatever, whatever math you want to do to what this engine produces at the crank. But that's a lot of power. That's more than enough for this. This thing weighs, what, 3,200 pounds, 3,400 pounds? Still, you're, you're right where you want to be. And uh, boy, howdy, <laughs> it's very fast. But anyway, 
Um, so wait, wait a minute. Anthony, where, uh, okay. So you said this is twin turbo from, from where? Well, key clue here is these pipes. You see these? These pipes come from an intercooler. That intercooler goes from a turbo and the turbo sit somewhere down yonder <laughs> in there somewhere. Cause uh, you, you know what? Just, just follow what the intake manifold says. Twin turbo, there we go. Yes, we, we trust you intake manifold. We trust you. But um, anyway, trust me, they're in there. I actually had the pleasure or, you know, uh, was punished to work on one of these. Uh, I had to do these spark plugs, which can be done from the top. Can, can be done from the top, but not easily. Um, it, it's well known that working on one of these is fairly difficult and kind of a challenge, but it can be done. Um, but now that we're down here, I wanted to show you real quick if you remember, I showed you that button that has the adjustable suspension system. Well, that controls these things. Now you'll notice, what is this? This is a little motor that sits on top of the strut. Well, the strut is adjustable. Just like you have the manual ones, these are driven by little motors that are controlled by a switch inside the cockpit. And the back are the same. So that is your electronically controlled suspension system. Pretty cool, right? I mean, this is... You know, high tech for the time, but still sort of analog. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. Oh, yes. And since he got this vehicle. Oh, by the way, this real quick here. This is the power steering unit the, that sends the pressure to the back of wheels. So this is for the back wheels right here. This right here, obviously, is for the front. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That's the unit right here that controls the back. But anyway, uh, there's a bunch of, you know, wizardry that went into controlling the turbos in this thing. And back then, it was controlled by boost signals and vacuum hoses and miles and miles and miles of hoses so what he has done he's actually swapped over that to electronically controlled so there's solenoids that control everything little motors and stuff and that's controlled by a actual control box that sits inside the vehicle now so you don't have any of those vacuum leak issues anymore uh where you know hoses will degrade over time and you'll have issues where that you know it'll just leak and not control anything anymore or control it kind of sort of and give you misses and so on so he has circumvented that problem. So now he's got a very reliable vehicle. And this being a Nissan, and I've owned a vehicle with one of these engines in it, they're pretty darn bulletproof. So, oh, good on that. Also, little nice side note I forgot to tell you about the styling. You'll notice these lenses aren't faded. It's not because they're new. It's not because, you know, he's replaced them with something. These are actually glass. So they haven't faded with time. It's pretty cool, right? So, you know, little tidbits like that that people don't, normally know anymore but anyway that thing that thing's just awesome and that's a pretty good looking intake manifold i think right and of course you can't go wrong with turbo yeah that's cool all right guys so let's check out the inside of this bad boy so real quick i'm going to show you these seats now these seats are pretty cool and they're actually functional to the story of the gentleman who owns this vehicle so these seats weren't the seats that came with this vehicle this came obviously it's type of line of car this is going to come with top of the line seats right so we're talking electric seats lumbar support the whole nine yards unfortunately the gentleman who owns this vehicle is actually a lot very tall you know and he sort of barely fits in here <laughs> as is so with those seats when you have electric seats the motors have to sit somewhere they sit normally underneath the, the seat they make the seat a little bit taller well that is a problem with tall people because they can barely fit in the car if the seat's a little taller. So these seats are actually the sporty seats available on the non, you know, electric seat vehicles. You know, the non-turbo or whatever you want to call them. These fit better. They are a little bit lower and they're actually lighter. So, you know, hey, lighter, you know, weight reduction, sportiness, race car. <laughs> and look at that Z on there. That's pretty cool. Anyway, he had these reaffalsered in suede, so that ultra suede. You see that that gray in the middle with the leather. So we got ultra suede and leather and the embroidered Z on the. I think they look really really cool. They look so period and so awesome, and they feel really nice. But anyway, that's a little kind of personalization he had to do in order to get the vehicle to work for him. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and also nice little thing about this year of Nissan 300ZX is the tri-spoke steering wheel the tri-spoke steering wheel was only really around for the early 90s after this they had to put a kind of a square looking uh nissan sort of corporate steering wheel and the reason for that is airbags this does not have airbags at this point in time they weren't mandated yet and so this still you could still design the steering wheel a certain way after this 
all airbags, all square center sections for the for the steering wheel. So that's a nice little tidbit. Let's see here. We got all of our controls oriented towards the driver because you know driver's car. So everything is at the fingertips of the driver. I thought I think that's pretty cool. Check out the controls for the HVAC. So we got auto. That's pretty cool, right? We got auto uh, climate control. We got our up and down for heater and cold. We got everything right there, <laughs> right off to the side of the steering wheel. Remember, the whole point of this thing is a driving machine, driving vehicle, right? So it's got to be all right there, oriented towards the driver. Five speed, nothing too crazy with the five speed. We we still get, we can still kind of see the embroidered five speed on there, the pattern. Of course, the button for the suspension system and look at that do you guys know what that is some of you might know what that is this is a boost controller remember i told you he had tuned this and this actually controls the boost on the turbos that are in this thing so we're talking 7 psi for when you just want to cruise around 10 psi when you want to you know give it some good boost give it you know have fun with it and then 15 psi when you mean business <laughs> or when you want to make a beautiful burnout back there right but anyway that's really cool he has it hidden in here you know don't need to show don't, don't need to see that right that's that's just that's racing secrets right there that's that's for the drag strip or or for the track right but anyway that's pretty cool no back seats in this sports car true sports car see here we got we got a nice little parcel shelf back there we got a nice little area it's pretty spacious for a supercar rear wiper because a lot of these vehicles had that it was very common at the time for these sports cars supercars to have this all right so let's check out this trunk here and you know what that's a pretty good space back here look at this it's not bad you know for the retirees you can fit some golf clothes back here right or some luggage to go on a good trip and of course we have to have the obligatory cd changer come on now i mean 90s car come on <laughs> but anyway um the t-tops you notice how they were off the vehicle they actually live back here under this cover here and just like my fiero they got a little strap to hold them down so not much had changed at the time i guess but uh at least these are held a little bit better in i think than mine was anyway but yeah that's not not a whole lot of fuss back here not a whole lot of muss this is a very practical supercar if you will um and yeah it's pretty cool but you know what guys i think we've blabbed enough i think we've talked enough i think we should take this on a drive what do you think yeah let's go drive this car all right so I'm driving the 1990 300ZX from Nissan. Twin turbo, five speed, and all wheel drive. I mean, all wheel steering, sorry. <laughs> Man, I gotta tell you, this thing's amazing. For what they were able to accomplish back in the 90s, this feels like a modern supercar. It's fast, it's easy to drive. Um, been driving my Fiero for a little while now, and that thing, while easy to drive, does not compare to this. The power is just superb in this thing. It's so planted. You feel safe in here. You can go pretty fast. I'm not gonna, but you can go pretty fast and it's easy to handle. It's like on rails. It's really, really nice. And that's the thing about these cars is they're so underrated by the people who don't know. The people who don't know are like, oh, well, on paper, this only had 300 horsepower, you know, and it only has uh, this, that, the other. It's heavy, all of these other things. But if people don't fail to realize back then, this is top of the line. This was amazing, especially for Japan. It's just, Japan had nothing like this before. So it's pretty intense what they were able to do. And this, oh man, I gotta tell you, I've met a hero of mine and I'm not disappointed. It's a great car. It's amazing to drive. If you guys ever get a chance to drive one of these, I recommend it. It's so great. And with the ability to control that boost, oh, oh, uh, it's just extra. It's, it's that much more extra. It's next level. And that's the thing about these cars is they're meant to be driven, right? They're meant to be fun. They're meant to be enjoyable. And it's unfortunate in uh, the modern car culture and the modern car climate uh, that these are becoming collectors because great, you, know, you can get more out of your investment now, but at the same time, you think a little bit about driving it hard. You start getting that, that weird sensation of like, oh, I don't know if I want to push it like that. That's sad because these things were meant to be driven safely, but driven, driven well. And they, you, this thing wants you to push it. This thing wants you to give it the beans and it responds. 
It responds really, really well. So, yeah, this thing's awesome. It represents how advanced they were back then. How advanced they really were back then and, you know, how not that much progress has been made, honestly. But anyway, I think this is an amazing car. I hope you guys think it's an amazing car. And, uh, man, just driving around in this is just, <laughs> it's a treat. It is so good. Anyway, guys, I think I should probably hand this back to the owner. Uh, I'm sure he misses it. Let me just remember where I left him. <laughs> See you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this episode of Tales from the Junkyard. That 300ZX was amazing. Oh, man, uh, such a good time. Kind of wish I had that car. <laughs> but anyway, please let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comments below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, see you guys next time.